This is a classic do an interesting integral video, and here we're gonna look at the integral over the entire real number line, in other words, from minus infinity to infinity, of the arctan of one over two x squared, in other words, the inverse tangent of one over two x squared. And we're gonna use three tools along the way, which we could establish these while we're evaluating this integral, but we're gonna do it outside of the evaluation of this integral, just to make it work a little more cleanly. Two of them involve limits, and one of them is a partial fractions decomposition. So let's go ahead and calculate this top limit first. So notice we have the limit, as x goes to plus minus infinity, we can actually do those at the same time because we're approaching zero here, or we're showing that we're approaching zero here, of x times the arctan of one over two x squared. Great. And so an important thing to notice is the argument of the inverse tangent is approaching zero, and the inverse tangent of zero is equal to zero. So this is of type infinity times zero, which means it's an indeterminate form, which means we can rewrite it and use L'Hopital's rule. So the way that I wanna rewrite this one is the limit as x goes to plus minus infinity, and now I'll leave this arctan of one over two x squared in the numerator, and I'll rewrite that multiplier of x as a divider of one over x squared. And now we can check that this numerator is approaching zero and this denominator is also approaching zero. So we have something of type zero over zero, which means we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have the limit as x goes to plus minus infinity. So taking the derivative of the numerator, we have to use the chain rule here. So that's gonna leave us with minus one over x cubed in the numerator. And then we have plus one plus one over two x squared quantity squared in the denominator. Great, and now let's see, if we take the derivative of this denominator, we'll have minus one over x squared. Okay, great. So now let's see what we get. Uh, when we do some simplification, we'll get the limit as x goes to plus minus infinity of. So what I'll do is I'll take this minus sign and have it cancel this minus sign. Good. And then I'll also swing this x squared up to the numerator and turn this 1 over x cubed to a 1 over x. So let's see. We'll have 1 over x, and that's all over 1 plus 1 over 4x to the fourth. So that's what we get if we square that one over two x squared. So now we're actually in pretty good shape because as x goes to plus or minus infinity, this one over four x to the fourth is going to approach zero. And then this numerator, which is one over x, will also approach zero. So the numerator is approaching zero and the denominator is approaching one plus zero, which means this whole thing is approaching zero. Okay, so we've established this first limit and now we're ready to look at this second limit. So we wanna look at the limit as x goes to plus minus infinity of the natural log of this rational function, which is two x squared minus two x plus one over two x squared plus two x plus one. Now I'm gonna use the fact that the natural log is a continuous function to bring the limit inside of this continuous function. So that's gonna give me the natural log of the limit as x goes to plus minus infinity of 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 over 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. And now we can use the fact that we're taking the infinite limit of a rational function, and so it boils down to what the leading terms in the numerator and the denominator are. So in other words, this minus 2x plus 1 and this plus 2x plus 1 doesn't matter as they're not dominating the whole picture. And what we see is we're left with 2x squared over 2x squared, but that means this whole interior of the natural log is limiting to one, which means we have the natural log of one, which is equal to zero. Okay, good, so now we've established the second limit. And now we're ready to move on to this third tool, which is a partial fractions decomposition. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll hone in on this denominator, 4x to the fourth plus one, and show that it can be factored using a trick. So I'm gonna take this term, 4x to the fourth plus one, and I'm gonna rewrite it as 4x to the fourth plus 4x squared plus one minus 4x squared. So notice I've added 4x squared and I've subtracted 4x squared. Now I'll group the first three terms and the last term, 
and write them using perfect squares. In other words, I'll take these first three terms and I'll factor it like 2x squared plus one quantity squared. Now notice if I were to expand out that binomial squared, I would get this first chunk. And then I'll rewrite this second bit as 2x whole quantity squared. And so now I have a difference of squares, which means I can factor that like 2x squared minus 2x plus one and 2x squared plus 2x plus one. So we've built a tricky factorization for 4x to the fourth plus one. But that means that we can take this 4x squared over 4x to the fourth plus one and rewrite it as ax plus b over the first quadratic. So that's gonna be 2x squared minus 2x plus one plus cx plus d over the second quadratic. So that's gonna be 2x squared plus 2x plus one. Great, so now what I'll do is I'll multiply this whole thing by the common denominator in order to clear the fractions. And so that means I'll multiply by 4x to the fourth plus one, keeping in mind that 4x to the fourth plus one is this denominator times that denominator. So let's see, that's gonna leave me with 4x to the squared on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, I'll have ax plus b times 2x squared plus 2x plus one, and then plus cx plus d times 2x squared minus 2x plus one because that's what's left over after we hit this first fraction with 4x to the fourth plus one and the second fraction likewise. Okay, great. Now what I'm gonna notice is that I have a cubic polynomial on the right-hand side of the equation and I have a quadratic on the left-hand side of the equation. And so by the equality of these polynomials, that means the coefficients of the cubic term, the quadratic term, the linear term, and the constant term have to be equal on both sides of the equation. So let's look at the cubic terms first. So I'll write this from right to left. So on the right-hand side of the equation, my cubic term is given by ax times 2x squared and cx times 2x squared. So that's gonna be 2a time, so that's gonna be 2a plus 2c. So I have 2a plus 2c, and that's gonna be equal to uh, zero because there's no cubic on the left-hand side of the equation. Okay, now let's look at the squared terms on the right and left-hand side of the equation. Okay, so for the quadratic terms, I have b times 2x squared, and I also have 2x times ax. And then I have d times 2x squared, and then I have cx times minus 2x. So let's see what that gives me. That's gonna give me two times a plus two times b, so 2a plus 2b. And then over here, I'll have minus 2c plus 2d. So minus 2c plus 2d equals four because that's the coefficient of x squared on the left-hand side of the equation. So now let's look at the coefficients of x. In other words, the linear terms. So notice here I have ax times one and then I have b times 2x. So that's gonna be a plus 2b, a plus 2b. And then here I have cx times one and d times minus 2x. So that's gonna be c minus 2d. So plus c minus 2d. And that's equal to zero because there's no linear terms on the left-hand side of the equation. Now finally, let's look at the constant term. So I'll just write a one for that. So I have b for this first bit and then I have D for the second bit, so I'll have B plus D equals zero. Okay, so now we're ready to go. The fact that 2A plus 2C equals zero, that tells me immediately that C equals negative A. And then the fact that B plus D equals zero, that tells me immediately that D equals negative B. So that means I really have an equation with just two variables. I can use A and B as my variables. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plug these substitutions into the middle two equations and see what we get. So we'll have a plus c, well that's equal to zero by what we saw up here. 
and then we'll have 2b minus 2d equals 0, but that's going to give us 2b and then plus another 2b because d is minus b, so plus 2b equals 0, but that tells me that b equals 0, but that tells me that d equals 0. Okay, fantastic. But now let's see what we can do with that. We know that d equals 0 and b equals 0. We have 2a minus 2c equals 4, but c is minus a, but that tells me that 4a equals 4. In other words, a is equal to 1, which makes c equal to negative 1. But now notice if we replace ax plus b and cx plus d with what we found down here, we'll have an x here, we'll have an x here, and then we can bring the minus sign in front of the x right here, which is exactly what we wanted to establish. Now that we have our three tools, we're ready to tackle our goal integral. So notice this is an integral of an inverse function, so that usually points to using integration by parts to start. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll let u equal arctan of 1 over 2x squared, and then we'll let dv equal dx. And remember the standard is to let u be the inverse function and dv be everything else. It's just Everything else here is just dx. So now we'll take the derivative in order to find du, but notice that's the same thing as when we took the derivative using L'Hopital's rule here. So I'll just jump right to it. We had minus 4x over 4x to the fourth plus one. So I'll let you guys check back at the beginning of the video, but that's what you get when you take the derivative of this. Okay, great. And now taking the antiderivative here, we get v equals x. So now we have all of our parts built for our integration by parts. All we have to do is recall that the general formula is u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Good. So that means I'll have u times v. So I'll rewrite that as x times the arctan of 1 over 2x squared. And then we need to evaluate that from minus infinity to infinity. And then I'm going to have minus v times du, and that needs to be integrated. Notice these minus signs are gonna cancel, and that's gonna leave us with plus the integral from minus infinity to infinity of 4x squared over 4x to the fourth plus one dx. Now this first bit can be taken care of with this limit that we calculated earlier, so that means all of this is just zero, and that's because we have to take the limit for the positive infinity and the negative infinity, but we showed both of those were zero. And now we're left with the integral from minus infinity to infinity of 4x squared over 4x to the fourth plus one, but we can use this partial fraction decomposition on that. So I'll just go ahead and write that down. Here we have the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x over 2x squared minus 2x plus 1, and then minus x over 2x squared plus 2x plus 1 dx. So we've boiled our goal integral down into this guy right here. So now I want to use a little bit of a trick on this in order to simplify it. And I'll do that by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by 2. And I'll do that for both of these. So that's going to leave me with the integral from minus infinity to infinity of 2x over 4x squared minus 4x plus 2. And then I have minus 2x over 4x squared plus 4x plus 2 dx. Good. But now each of these is set up pretty nicely to complete the square. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to rewrite this as the integral from minus infinity to infinity. I have 2x over. Now I'm going to write this as 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 plus 1. And then I'll do the same kind of thing in the next bit. So that's going to be minus 2x over 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 plus 1. Great. And now like I did, I'm going to group these. And then I'll notice that this thing right here is 2x minus 1 quantity squared. And then this guy right here is 2x plus 1 quantity squared. Great. And so now what I'll do 
is bring that up and we'll continue on. So we got our goal integral down to this form. It's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of 2x over 2x minus one quantity squared plus one minus 2x over 2x plus one quantity squared plus one. Now what I wanna do is make this numerator look a little bit more like the denominator and I'll do that by subtracting one and then adding one. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll add one and I'll subtract one. Okay. And now from there, I want to split that into pieces. So I'm going to split this up into, well, we still have the integral from minus infinity to infinity. And then I have 2x minus 1 over 2x minus 1 squared plus 1. Great. And then I'm going to have plus 1 over 2x squared minus 1 quantity squared plus 1. Good. And then I'll do the same kind of thing for the next term. So that'll be minus 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 1 quantity squared plus 1. And then I have a minus and another minus sign. So I'll let those cancel. And that'll leave me with plus 1 over 2x plus 1 quantity squared plus 1. And then I have dx. Great. But now we can notice that the derivative of the denominator here is essentially in the numerator. We're actually just missing a factor of two. And then the same thing goes here. The derivative of the denominator here is inside the numerator, just missing a factor of two. So this first term is gonna integrate like one half times the natural log of this denominator. Again, a one half because if you take the derivative of the denominator, we get the numerator except we're missing a two. So in other words, we have this is equal to one half the natural log of 2x minus one quantity squared plus one. Great, and then we can do the same kind of thing for this. So that's gonna be minus one half, and then we have the natural log of 2x plus one quantity squared plus one. Now we need to evaluate that in positive and negative infinity, but we'll get to that next. So now we have an irreducible quadratic here and just the number one in the numerator. So that is going to integrate like an inverse tangent but we need to take care of the fact that we have a two here and we can do that by putting a half out front. So here, this is gonna be plus one half times the arctan of two X minus one. And then the same kind of thing here, that'll be plus another half. And then we have the arctan of two X minus one. And then we'll need to evaluate all of this from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, so let's go ahead and put these things together a little bit. So notice I can use natural log rules to smash these together. This will be one half the natural log of this guy over this guy. But if you recall how we formed these things, we did it by multiplying by two and then factoring a perfect square. And in fact, we'll get back exactly to this ratio. So I'll just go ahead and write that down. So that's two X squared minus two X plus one over two X squared plus two X plus one. And like I said, we need to evaluate that from minus infinity to infinity. So I just wanna point out that that's from this and this and then factoring the numerator and the denominator by two and then canceling that. Okay, great. And then the next thing that we have is plus one half and then we have the arctan of two X minus one plus the arctan of two X plus one. So, and then we need to evaluate that from minus infinity to infinity. So from our limit that we calculated earlier, we see that all of this becomes zero. And then the inverse tangent as the argument approaches infinity is pi over two. And as it approaches minus infinity is minus pi over two. So that's gonna give us one half, and then we have pi over two plus pi over two minus one half, and then we have minus pi over two um, minus pi over two. Again, that's from plugging in the infinity and the minus infinity into the inverse tangent. Well, actually we're taking the limit there. But now we can combine all of those terms together and we'll see that they all add up just to pi. So we found the value of our goal integral and it's just pi, which is a nice result. Okay, that's a good place to stop.